Okay, we're back. This is Dave Vellante. I'm here live at the Wikibon offices in Massachusetts. And this is our first ever simulcast. We've got a bi-coastal cube gig going on here. This is the Flash, Flash Cube. My colleague and co-host John Furrier is in the brand new Palo Alto studio, SiliconANGLE studio. This is the cube where we extract the signal from the noise. We bring you the best guests that we can find. Scott Dietzen is here. He is the CEO of Pure Storage, an up and coming hot all flash array company. Scott, welcome back. Good to be back, David, John. Very, very thankful to, to be on board. Yeah, always good to talk to you. I mean, there's, there's a lot been going on since we, we last talked, whenever it was, I don't know, it was almost a year ago now. And uh, you're seeing some of the big whales get into the marketplace. We saw EMC make some moves, big announcements, bold statements. IBM just announced that it was investing a, a billion dollars in flash. It rebranded the TMS uh, uh, acquisition. So what do you make of all this action? I, I, we think it feels great, right? I mean, what if uh, the big guys aren't um, uh, coming after the solution that you're putting forward in the marketplace, then um, something may well be wrong. So uh, this competition is a great thing for uh, those of us trying to grow our businesses because you need competition to drive growth. And, and most of all, it's a great thing for customers. You know, customers are going to have an array of different choices uh, with you know, very different parameters uh, around them in the flash space. Uh, so they're going to have to, you know, do do some homework uh, before making their purchases. Uh, but we, you know, we couldn't be more excited about, you know, the the, the competitive environment and how much fun it's going to be in the in the next few years. Yeah. So talk about uh, Pure's differentiation a little bit. Obviously, you're going up against now much bigger companies, more well-funded, a um, lot of cash. How do you differentiate in the marketplace? Well, so when when Pure was founded, um, we felt the key hurdles to flash adoption in the enterprise. Uh, we're two. We're, we're cost and compatibility with existing uh, enterprise applications and workloads, right? The customers we work with don't want to re, you know, rewrite their applications. They don't want to change uh, their configurations. They want a flash uh, substitute that can be just slotted in in place of a disk array and yet offer all of the advantages of, of flash, the performance, the power and space efficiency, and, and the dramatic simplicity advantages over disk. So you know, we crafted this this recipe you know four years ago now, where we used um, uh, off-the-shelf MLC flash, uh, and where we used very fast data reduction, so global inline deduplication and compression uh, that works uh, sub millisecond and yet shrinks the data that we we store on disk, so we could get uh, the price point of, of all flash down to where it was uh, competitive with disk, uh, and you know that remains a unique differentiator for us in the marketplace. Although clearly, you know, with solutions like uh, Extreme I/O from EMC and FlashRay coming from NetApp, um, we expect to see company in the years ahead. Yeah, so you guys have been very aggressive about the data reduction strategy. It's it's it's, it's critical, uh, and and you're pushing that very hard. So what I'm hearing from you, Scott, is you you feel as though you've got a lead uh, in that uh, regard. Relative is certainly you know Extreme I/O is not in the marketplace yet. IBM you know, hasn't done, for instance, the data reduction yet, even though you expect that to come with store-wise. So all that's coming. So what's next for you guys? How are you going to stay ahead of that curve? <laughs> um, but time is going to tell how uh, steep these, these hurdles are. I mean, we've invested uh, uh, dramatically in software. You know, I, I would say some of the companies that got into the flash space, especially those that got in uh, earlier, had to go off and make hardware investments to, you know, to even assemble a form factor that was 100% flash. And we had the luxury of coming into the market when we could put together uh, off-the-shelf uh, hardware technology and put all, pour all of our energy into software because we, we see that as the differentiator uh, long-term. So you know, the way we think you win in this marketplace is through cost. You know, we talked about data reduction. One of the things we've done is actually put our data reduction aggregated across hundreds of systems uh, up on our website so that everyone can see what the average data reduction uh, is uh, on a pure storage array and you know the difference that that can make um, what what happens next is you know continuing to grow and advance the solution so you know we have features like dedupe aware snapshots available in the marketplace today that's critical for most business critical deployments uh, of storage but we still are lacking things like replication for uh, cross-site disaster recovery. Uh, and we've, you know, we've got to build that technology out. Uh, there's ever greater uh, scale uh, of the solution, right? We're doing you know, 100 terabyte plus uh, deployments today, but we need to get into the half petabyte range uh, for 
um, the customer demand that we're, we're seeing uh, going forward. And then there's opportunity to support you know, alternative access protocols and, and so on. Uh, we, we joke, uh, our CTO jokes, we've got a, a five-year uh, roadmap uh, to keep uh, one of the most talented engineering teams uh, busy uh, that will hopefully allow us to stay ahead uh, in a very competitive market. Yeah, I love the forthrightness, Scott. You're always uh, uh, that way with us on theCUBE. Talk a little bit about this whole notion of software-defined or what we call Wikibon software-led. Um, what makes you guys um, feel as though that's the future, number one, and, and what makes you software-defined or software-led? Well, you know, I, the, the term, at least with respect to storage, I, I, I do think is still being sorted out. So uh, I, I like the renaming you guys have, uh, have proposed. Uh, when some people talk about the term, they talk about uh, storage uh, where you actually put the media into the, the server uh, infrastructure. Uh, and then, you know, you, you sort things like all tolerance um, and, uh, you know, being able to protect the data through mirroring and so on, all with a software stack that runs entirely inside of the of the server. And that mimics what some of the large uh, data centers have done, you know, what Google and Facebook have done with, with their architectures. Uh, the, the challenge for that model with a you know, traditional enterprise deployment, as I mentioned earlier, is it doesn't provide native high availability, native non-disruptive uh, upgrade, uh, non-disruptive expansion, um, features like uh, consistent snapshots um, and, uh, you know, replication out of the box across across data centers. These sorts of uh, features are crucial to traditional businesses uh, and we think ultimately need to be part of that infrastructure. But you know, ultimately the thing I think it's going to be hardest of all to pull off um, in this space is the really fast deduplication and compression. Um, the challenge with putting you know, all of your storage in the server tier is no individual server sees that much of the data set. Um, whereas if you have a shared storage footprint, um, you, you can achieve much higher levels of data reduction because you've got a larger volume of data to reduce. And, and that's actually how we've been able to get the cost of flash uh, in our storage array down below the cost of flash uh, deployed in the server tier, while still providing all of the control you would expect from a software-defined uh, backplane, right? Being able to integrate with technologies like OpenStack uh, so that customers can do all of the provisioning and, and management that they seek to do um, uh, out of uh, a software-defined infrastructure, you know, following standard DevOps. But, you know, we're still a believer in the, uh, you know, the appliance model of storage as opposed to just uh, loading up your servers with uh, PCIe uh, flashcards. Yeah, so one of the things that John Furrier and I talk about a lot is, is hyperscale. And John, I wonder if you could talk about that a little bit and, and maybe we can ask Scott about the lessons learned uh, specifically from hyperscale and how their pure is applying that to the, to the data center, almost in a, uh, yeah. uh, it's hyperscale Scott. for the enterprise. Scott, one of the things we were talking about earlier on the program here on the Flash Ahead uh, Flash Cube is um, scale out open source, which obviously you are a big proponent of open source and open systems. You know, you pioneered a lot of the, you know, what we call early, you know, gener first generation web, web workloads, right? So the conversation tends to go scale out open source, open source software on industry standard hardwares, focusing on workloads, essentially the applications. So the question I want to ask you is, obviously on the web side, Google builds their own stuff. Facebook assembles their own infrastructure. You know, Apple does their own thing. So th these these web companies led the way. For an IT enterprise, it's just not that greenfield. So I would like to get your perspective: is what's it going to take for IT enterprise to cross the chasm to get to start putting their toe in the water of hyperscale? Specifically, it's just not that easy. I mean, if, you know, it's pretty easy for Facebook to start from a clean sheet of paper with one application, Facebook. But for an enterprise, it's a little bit complex. You mentioned dedupe, all these different things. So I'd like you to just share your opinion on one, what it takes for an IT enterprise to really start moving in that direction. Because they all want to kind of go there. They just got to build that bridge. Could you comment on that? Oh, it's a pretty far ranging topic. Um, it, it, so op open source, you know, there's, a, there's a, a, a technology stack that continues to, to grow up uh, that is ultimately challenging a bunch of server software um, proprietary incumbents. So, you know, I, I'm a big fan of the big data uh, technology, um, you know, around Hadoop, and I'm involved in uh, Cloudera uh, as, the, as their outside director. And that's been really fun uh, to, to watch uh, that software change the way businesses approach, you know, analytic, uh, analytic problems. Um, you know, in fact, if you look across, you know, all of the traditional software in the, in the server tier is being challenged by some next generation uh, 
typically open source uh, in, uh, technology or or SaaS, uh, where they're using the open source infrastructure to go off and, and, and power it. Um, I, I would say that there's still a lot of growing up that this stack has to do, however, right? I mean, customers want full elasticity uh, so that they can, you know, add commodity hardware to be able to scale uh, and, you know, right size the deployment for an application. Um, they want to be able to mix and match private and public cloud and have investment protected across those things. And there's really no, you know, simple, easy rules that you can discern other than picking you know, open source technologies that have received broad adoption and, and you know, and oftentimes been used by these large public uh, open, you know, uh, the uh, public uh, consumer website because they've been they've been proven out. And that can give you a distinct, distinct advantage there. And so, a comment about examples of people migrating from IT over, is any specific use cases we see uh, pure storage playing a role there? I mean, obviously there is an emphasis on build out for these applications, so there's investment. So the, um, the sweet spots that we've been uh, targeting are, have been um, virtualized and uh, database workloads. So uh, three different use cases. Um, uh, database, it's mostly analytics, so customers uh, that would be running uh, some um, workload that is performance constrained. Uh, a typical customer might have an analytics batch job that takes 24 hours uh, to complete, uh, and they're running up against you know being able to inform business decisions for you know next day setting pricing, uh, for example. Um, those solutions, when based on disk and moved to flash, will you know run at least 10x faster. You know we've uh, had people get uh, their workloads down to you know to an hour or less, and actually consider switching the whole batch environment over to real time so that you know the business is constantly being updated over the course of the business day or they can ask you know 10x more uh, interesting uh, questions um the, the next tier i would describe is you know people that are running heavy uh, virtualized workloads where um the they're, they're pressing the storage really hard uh, you know products like mware um, uh, and uh, kvm and other virtualized architecture are very random co intensive, which is really expensive on mechanical disk. Uh, stress is the mechanical disk. Um, we've seen by being able to introduce flash storage, we've had customers see three to five fold server consolidation, and that includes the enterprise software running on top of those servers, where, whereby they actually save enough money by moving to flash that the, the storage product is free. Um, and, and last workload, you know, we've had um, great success with has been virtual desktop infrastructure or VDI. You know, with the emergence of, of tablets uh, and smartphones, there's been um, uh, a push toward your own device to the workplace. Uh, enterprise likes that model. Ultimately, they want to serve their users, but they hate giving up uh, the reliability of you know, having a backup of everybody's uh, desktop image uh, and the security of being able to manage that. Um, what all flat storage can bring um, is uh, all of the great user experience of VDI. In fact, users on top of a flash store like Pure, find the user experience is better than a fast laptop with a local SSD, even though you're going across the network, and, and yet the enterprise isn't sacrificed any of that manageability and security. Scott, I wonder if we talk a little bit more about the, uh, the software piece of it, and, and particularly your, your data management, your storage management, your volume management stack. You mentioned some, some things like replication that you're trying to build out. It's not trivial, uh, as you, as you, you mentioned. Uh, and, and also, the de I love the deduplication focus. It worked really well for, for data domain and Frank Slootman. He used to pound that really hard. And I, and I think it's a simple, easy to understand message for customers. But some of the other pieces of the software stack are, are much more nuanced. And if you look at the landscape within Flash, you see a real mix of software capabilities. Uh, it's not easy to just, as I say, it's, tr it's not trivial to build up a, a, a data management, volume management, um, a, a storage management stack. Um, and you're seeing, for example, uh, violin OEMs from Symantec, uh, Extreme IO, you know, still working to get its stack together. Who knows? Maybe it can borrow some IP from EMC. Same thing for IBM. You know, very currently, uh, uh, data management, volume management, storage management, light. Um, talk about where you're at, uh, what you see as evolving in the industry. You know, generally and specifically uh, with Pure. So I, we mentioned earlier that this uh, is a complicated environment for customers to make choices because if you, if you look at uh, the marketing literature from all of the, the vendors, uh, there are a lot, of, uh, a lot of dramatic claims. So for storage in particular, you know, customers have to um, 
test the solution to, to be comfortable that they're getting you know what they're they're paying for uh, the good news about storage is you really can uh, and should you know beat it up and, and watch what happens uh, while you're doing so so you know most of our engagements still start with a proof of concept where the customer puts some performance intensive workload on the product uh, and then actually observes the data reduction ratios that we're delivering right and then can use that number uh, to you know to figure out exactly how much money we're saving them relative to disk uh, and then they'll try things like while the, the storage is under heavy load uh, they'll they'll pull SSDs they'll pull network cables uh, they'll unplug power supplies um, uh, they'll install new versions of the software right true enterprise technology should be able to accommodate all of those use cases non disruptively we uh, you know think of non disruptive uh, everything uh, in the storage tier because everything upstream you know depends on that storage being available and uh, this is where you know customers will see substantial differences in the various solutions you know the level of data reduction that's actually afforded uh, in these you know production systems and then their ability with, to withstand um, all sorts of uh, incremental failures and self heal around those failures uh, in the environment is something we would encourage every customer to, to try out um, that being said, something else we launched, um, you know, when people hear our story, the typical reaction is, you know, flash at the price of disk um, with all of my quality of service features uh, implemented as well. That's just too good to be true. And, and so we, uh, we moved to a model where we provide a, um, we call it the love your storage guarantee. If we don't deliver on uh, the data reduction, uh, the performance, the quality of service, the simplicity, uh, that we advertise through the course of our engagement with a customer, then we'll give them their money back. Have you ever uh, had a deliver on that uh, guarantee? Uh, not yet, um, <laughs> it, but it's uh, it's such a competitive marketplace. You know, I'm 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 sure we will have to deliver on that uh, at some point in time. But you know, when we we look at it, I mean, uh, we look at the the customers that are delighted with our product uh, after they get it. Um, it's a no brainer investment uh, for us to offer that money get back guarantee. Uh, given how rarely customers don't fall in love with the storage once they get their hands on it. Scott, can you talk about the competition? You mentioned it's very competitive. Obviously, um, you guys are have a different advantage because you're coming up and you're, you're essentially growing startup and heavily funded. Obviously, the business that you're in, you have to be. But the bigger players have to make adjustments. IBM's announcement was very clear. We talked about it earlier. It's a stake in the ground. M much more uh, a rallying cry internally for IBM to kind of rally around storage again. And two, it gives public confidence. And the rest is kind of like, I think, you know, just is what it is. Um, EMC went out and decided to buy Extreme IO. Again, a big move. Some are saying that, you know, internally it wasn't working, so they go outside to get it. How long does it take? Can they just cobble together acquisitions? How much organic growth do you think they need to do? Obviously, modern infrastructure is changing. Uh, what, what is your opinion of the M&A of these big players, and what do they need to do in the, the EMC for specifically Extreme IO? That's a big acquisition. They're betting the farm on Extreme, Extreme IO. Uh, well, it, so you know, I, I shouldn't um, suggest I really understand EMC's uh, strategy in full, but you know, I, it, it feels to me like they are building the train uh, track from both directions, right? They are they're building out the Extreme IO solution and investing in that, but they're also also continuing to invest in VMAX and VNX, their legacy disk uh, solutions, uh, in in adding ever more flash uh, to them. You know, the the challenge with those solutions is it's harder to you know to go off and do the radically innovative things like uh, full deduplication. Um, you know, ultimately we think they're going to need to do compression too to be competitive with the the data savings that we're we're providing. Uh, and, and, but, you know, EMC is a, is a large organization. They'll be able to make, you know, those broad investments. Um, and Extreme IO is, you know, a technology that comes with, you know, a bunch of the, 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 the foundational pieces uh, addressed, right? I mean, the most crucial things are being able to get that fast data reduction um, married to uh, native implementation of snapshots, right? If, if you try to provide snapshots, uh, that's not well integrated with deduplication, then snapshots get very expensive uh, from you know space and reporting uh, per the perspective. Whereas you know when they're uh, natively implemented and tied in with that data reduction technology, um, you can almost implement them with zero overhead. Uh, so we think Extreme IO has got a good start. In fact, of the of the larger solutions, we would rate it the one that's closest to us uh, in terms of being able to deliver all all of that value. Uh, integrated uh, together. You know, we we hope we have a you know 12 month 
uh, technology lead, and we'd like to grow that lead uh, over, over time. Um, I think for many of the other vendors, uh, there's a much longer software uh, investment to make. Um, you know, I, I mean, we, were, we first shipped a technology that was doing this inline deduplication and compression uh, in business critical deployments three years ago, right? And, and we've got a fantastic team. So the, the challenge will be, you know, this market is developing rapidly. You know, if, if you're still years away from having a competitive product that is able to deliver flash at the price of disk, uh, it may be too little too late. Yeah, so Scott, I had uh, two last questions for you. So what sort of milestones, what, what um, data points should observers be looking for in terms of, of Pure's progress over the next six, nine, 12, 18 months? What are the things that you're really focused on? Oh, so, I, I mean, the, the, the challenge in front of us is uh, scaling our business, you know, as, as rapidly as we can. I, I mean, we've mentioned uh, that we are out of the gates faster and growing faster than any company in storage history, at least any one for which we have a public, public data. Um, that puts a lot of, uh, you know, uh, challenges in front of a team. It's also just fantastic uh, fun. You know, we've got, uh, you know, partners uh, coming to us and we're, uh, we, we in, in some territories, we actually have waiting lists of salespeople that want to join the company. Uh, you know, as soon as we have enough pipeline available, then we'll, you know, we'll in, invite them in. Um, so it's a very gratifying position to be in, uh, but we've got to make great decisions about who we hire. We've got to make great decisions about the partners that we continue to work with. I mean, most of our business is uh, partner-led um, uh, and or partner-fulfilled. So continuing to attract the best and brightest uh, partners that can make the biggest difference for our business. That, that's why I sweat, right? The sweat you know, in front of us, the product is working so well. This is all about execution and, and moving quickly to uh, you know, capture as much uh, of the, the greater market as we can and make sure that we're showing the advantage of the product relative to these uh, competitors. Excellent, I was going to ask you what keeps you awake at night, what worries you, and I think you kind of just answered that, you know, hiring the right people, partnering with the right people, getting ROI out of your, your partners and your ecosystems. Uh, anything you'd add to that? Uh, I, I, I do lose, lose sl some sleep over differentiating, and you know, the, it is a very noisy space. Uh, but you know, I think the fact now that we've got the big guys coming out with product, um, you know, Extreme IO and Flash Rip from NetApp are, are both very similar to the product that we launched, in term of the recipe that's being articulated. So, so that ultimately makes it easier for us to say, here's the right? This is what the uh, market is converging on as the right solution. Uh, frankly, it's exactly the recipe that we launched Pure Storage with four years ago. I mean, it doesn't get any better uh, in, in tech, you know, to, to have the big guys come to your playing field um, and, you know, try to try win against, uh, against you there. So shame on us if we're not able uh, to continue our technology lead and, and you know, prove out the, the best at delivering this, uh, this value proposition in the industry. But, you know, it's, it's, it's going to be a lot of competitive work to stay ahead of talented uh, companies. Yeah, you're uh, excellent, Scott. Well, it's, you're right. It's a lot better than being all alone in an echo chamber. Scott Dietzen, uh, CEO of Pure Storage. Thanks very much for coming into the Cube today. Really appreciate it. Uh, my pleasure. Uh, always glad to join you guys. All right, everybody. Uh, keep it right there. We'll be, we'll be right back with this Flash Flash Cube right after this commercial break. We've got more guests coming up. This is Dave Vellante. We're live from Wikibon and Palo Alto.